back to Sim Right Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful kimono gown. It can also be a top and it's trending with plaquettes and collar. As you can see, these are my buttons, as you can see right there. This top is actually beautiful. You can use it for ready to wear. You can sew as much as possible in different sizes for ready to wear, okay? And it's actually gorgeous. So you can see the kimono sleeves and the plaquettes. So if this is what you want to learn, please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. This class, I will be teaching you how to make a kimono gown with strip on the sleeves and plaquettes. <clears throat> it has a color, it has a plaquette as you can see right there on the thumbnail. So this kimono gown I'm going to make, I'm making, I'm using my silk fabric to make it. You can also use um, a crepe fabric, you can use any fabric of your choice, but to have um, this exact effect, I'll be using my silk fabric. <clears throat> so this silk fabric I'm using here is 3 yards. So if you measure from salvage to uh, salvage, here I have 3 yards. But because it came by length of 45, so I'm going to place it not on the length, but I'm using the yardage as the length so this is what i mean by using the yardage so i have this as three years so when i fold it from here to here i have the desired length i want for this kimono dress so to begin this tutorial right now this um, fabric has already been folded as you can see we have um, two of it on fold so I'm going to fold it again. Hmm. I'm folding it to my hip measurements. So I'm folding it to my hip measurement. So if you are using a fabric that comes by length 60, you might not really need these three yards. <clears throat> so I got myself three yards because the length of fabric here is by 45. So I'm using the yardage part to make my length. So here I have folded my fabric by two once again. So folding it by two once again, I'm taking my measurements of my hip divide by four. So my hip divided by four, that is what I'm going to work with. Then I will add ease allowance to it. I'm adding three, three inches ease allowance plus sewing allowance, that will, that will be 4 inches. So whatever your hip is, I'm working with hip 50, hip 50, divide by 4, I've divided it by 2, I have 25, divide by 4, I have 12 inches, 12 and a half. So these 12 inches right now, I'll place the 12 inches on the edge I folded and then I'm going to mark my hip so I'll just push it for you to see what I'm doing so at that edge I marked 12 and a half this is my hip divided by 4 so I'll just mark it there so once I've marked it I'll add 3 inches for ease and 4 inches for one inch for sewing allowance so the whole thing i'm working with right here as you can see right here everything i'm working with here is 17 inches so i folded it again on 17 inches then we can start to work on the fabric right now so working on this fabric now i'm going to start up my measurement from the upper part of this dress <coughs> and we are going to make a border line for it so this is my 
borderline for this. So this dress can be a gown. It can also be a top. All right, beautiful people. So we've gotten the borderline, and from this borderline, we are going to take all our measurements. So the first measurement I'm going to take now is my chest line. So from this line, I mark my chest line as nine. I'll add half an inch for sewing. So I don't really want to mark too much on this dress. But I have no choice but to mark. So when you are working on this, please turn to the back part. So after making this dress, you don't have um, the lines showing too much. So from the shoulder, I measured my chest line is 9 inches. I added half an inch. Then after that, I'm going to mark my hip line or my waistline so from here i'll take my waistline my waistline is 17 i'll mark my my waistline i added half an inch take notes then my hip line is 29 i also added half an inch to it and the rest of it what I have on the hem is my floor line so we'll go back to the upper part so for the upper part now we'll start inserting all our necessary um, vertical lines so what we have on this dress we are going to cut the back first so since we are cutting the back first, I'll just come from the center front line. Center front and center back will be the same for this dress. So for the center front, I'll mark three inches. I'm marking three inches. So by the time I sew half an inch, I will have it open at three and half. Then I've cut out the three inch, uh, I've marked out the three inches. So next, I'm going to mark the full length of this kimono. This is the full length of the kimono. At the point we have, um, we folded, everything is the full length. So at that point, I'll come down by one and a half. From this line I made, I'll come down by one and a half. And I'm going to connect this line right now. I'm connecting it to the shoulder. I place my ruler to that three inches. That is the shoulder drop. Okay, so that is the shoulder drop. So now I'll come back again to the neckline. So this is the neckline. For the back neckline, I will step down by one inch for the back neckline. Then I'm going to connect the back neckline. So the normal way we usually connect it. So like I said, we are making both front and back. All right, so I've connected it. Okay, so once that is done, next is to take the kimono sleeve. So from here, I'm going to check. It depends on how wide you want the sleeve it to be and where you want it to be. So where you want your sleeve to be, of course, I have mine. Are the biceps and this biceps here is 16 inches so I'll just add ease of um, 2 inches to it so 16 I have 8 inches so from this point I'm going to measure 8 inches this is my 8 inches 
and the 8 inches falls on the chest line so you can also without taking the measurement you can just come down from the chest line and connect come down by one inch okay so that is it and you get your kimono sleeve so the next thing we are going to do is to connect this sleeve okay to this point i'll just come in from this point i will come in by one and a half Come in by one and a half and position your ruler this way from that point and you connect to this part okay so from the edge of the fabric coming by one and a half <clears throat> then you can now rule a line from there inwards so the line I ruled now, I'll leave it at this point till I come back to my waist, my hip line. So coming to my uh, my waistline, sorry, coming back to my waistline, I'm going to take my waist measurement. So my waist measurement is 10, that is 40, 10. Then I'm going to add 4 inches to it. 10, I'll add 4 inches to it. So this is my 4 inches. I'm going to connect from that my waistline to meet this line that we have the sleeve. Then I'm going to place a cuff. We usually have a cuff that we usually place for our kimono. So I'll just use my pattern ruler to form that curve that is the curve all right so now the next thing we are going to do is to go over to the hip so remember that the hip we've was already calculated the hip before we folded this fabric so on the hip line now this is the hip line i take my hip 12 and half and I add 4 inches to it, both for seam allowance and for sewing allowance. That is the 4 inches, as you can see. So I just go ahead and use my straight ruler and connect. If you have a kiff curve, you can also use it to connect that part. So next, I will take what I have from here to here, straight to the hem. So what I have from here to here is 16 and a half. So I'll come straight to the hem and measure the same 16 and a half and I'll mark. So I'll place my ruler straight and connect it to that point as you can see. So now we are going to cut out what we have right now. So, I'm going to cut right from the side. Note that we have added our seam allowance. So now I'm going to cut the back neckline. We are having the back neckline cut together with the front neckline and I'm cutting it to the shoulder slope. Then from there, I will cut the sleeve. I'll cut into that curve. And that is the kimono sleeve. So this kimono sleeve, we are still going to attach 
um, about one inch of band to it okay so this is what your dress looks like right now so now on this front we are going to <clears throat> mark out we are supposed to mark it out already so we are taking the our under bust measurement from here so my under bust is 14 and that is where we are going to have the end of this placket. So I'll add half an inch to it at my under bust. So from this front, under bust, I'll come in by one inch. So one inch is the width of this placket. That is where we are going to sew in this placket at one inch. And I'll connect that placket to the neckline. Can you see? So I'll connect it to the neckline. So now this becomes my front dress. So I'll quietly I'll pin it. Please make sure you pin. If you don't pin, surprisingly, it might. Okay, so before we pin, I'll just take this one away. The inner one. I'll raise it up and take off the inner one inner one will serve as the back I'll set it aside and the front one I'll put it together again so make sure you put it together and still have your center front because we've already marked our placket we have already marked the line for the placket so I put the neckline together and pin so make sure you pin very important before you cut. So I'm, I'll pin and pin all around before I cut. So now I'm done pinning. So the next thing I'm going to do is to cut. And remember we have this placket at one inch. That is the opening has to open at one inch. But see, so I want to make a little adjustment before we cut. Please, this is very important. The opening at one inch is the full front opening, as you can see on that uh, placket. Okay. So if it's going to open full front, it means since it's unfold, we are going to measure half an inch. Please take note half an inch so i'm making this adjustment please if not you have it as wide as two inches so it's on fold and i want it at half an inch i'll just go ahead and retrace this line at half an inch and connect it to the neck line i believe you understand what i did right there so now from this point i'll step up by half an inch because i'm going to stitch this uh, half an inch to have it on this line so i'll just go ahead and cut so what i'm cutting here is the front alone you can see when i remove the back so i'll cut to that point so this is it and i've taken it away so now on this neckline i'm going to mark because our placket is going to stop uh, starts halfway that's after the neckline so just go ahead and mark three inches so three inches i will mark three and a half because by the time i sew half an inch this is where we are going to attach it, the neckline so at this three inches so i will make a notch note that i step down by three and a half so at that point for the front alone I'll make a notch so that is where the collar is going to start so make sure you have your notch so now we'll go ahead to sew the sides together so the main purpose of this tutorial is the placket and the the placket and the collar okay so now to measure my placket before we sew from this part I notched I'm going to measure the length of my placket from there. So from here, the length of my placket is 11 and a half. So I measured it including my seam allowance. So I'm going to measure out 
11 and a half as my placket. Add one inch to sew the placket up and down. That is 12 and a half. So the width of my placket, since it's one inch and I'm going to sew half an inch, will be one and a half. So I'm cutting out one and a half now. I'll fold by 12 and a half. All right, so before we proceed, I just thought of showing you what we have <clears throat> at the center front. So you can see the center front right here. So this is the line of our placket to the neckline. So although we cut, we folded and cut at half an inch, it is very important you take the measurement of what you have from here to here. You can see this is how you're supposed to have this. So from here to here, I have more than one inch more than one inch. I have about 1.25. That's one and a quarter. So this one and a quarter I have together. When I put it on fold or one and a half, I put it on fold, I'll have 0 0.75. So that expansion always occur because of the kind of fabric that I'm using. So to be at the same size, simply cut your placket at two, two inches width on fold. So you can see I hasted this placket. Please ensure you hasted to give it that um, that uh, rigidity. So two inches I cut for the boat placket. You can see that and the length is 12 and a half. I just did 13. Okay, so it's better you have a shortage um, an excess than you have a shortage. So I have 13, 13 by two inches. So I'm going to go over to my machine now and stitch only at 0 0.5 for the upper placket. I'll stitch at 0 0.5, iron it out and bring it back to show you how to sew the first placket before we proceed to the next one. So I'm done sewing the two edges as you can see right here. Okay, so I will now go ahead and start sewing this. I'll sew it this way from here. I'm going to sew at half an inch. I'll sew it to the end. Can you see? So you can even see that I almost shot. Can you see? So it's exactly at half an inch. So I don't have anything to cut. So please be careful when taking the measurement and adding your seam allowance. So you don't have a shortage at the end of the day. So I'll go over to the machine and I'll sew in the boot. All right, so I'm done sewing my one part of the placket. So this is the part I've not sewn. This is the part I've not sewn. So you can see it <clears throat> right here. So I just thought of reducing this. Remember when we, before we stitched this placket, we had a notch. And this notch was at three and a half. So I'm thinking this three and a half will be high. We'll make this placket high. So I'll just come down more by four inches as standard to avoid choke. So I'll just go ahead and loosen out what I have and sew it from the... I'm going to start sewing now from the four inches, okay? I think four inches will give us a more relaxed placket with color. Because the color is going to run from the back to the front. So I'll just make my notch at 4 inches from here. So after sewing it will rest at 3 and a half instead of 3 inches. 3 inches will be too high. So I'll also mark the other parts as well. So I'm placing my notch starting my placket at 4 inches. So let me do that for some sewing it. This is what I have. <clears throat> So now, I'll turn the back and show you how I stitched it. So you can see that the two points I stopped at that 0 0.5. From here to here is 0 0.5. So make sure they stop at the same length. If not, it will be difficult for you to turn. So now, I'll extend this. You can see my notch. I'll extend it a little to that point but don't go beyond the point and I also extend only the fabric please don't cut on the placket I mistakenly cut on the only the fabric so once you have done that this is what the placket looks like so the placket automatically turns to this part 
So the one you want to be inside, I want this one to be inside. I will lay it first. Then the next I want to lay on top, I will lay it. So by the time I hold it on this way, you can see this automatically folds for you. Can you see? So I'm going to hold it down with my pin now. So you can see that the placket is closed at one inch. So this is it. Once you have inserted this, please, you need to do this very carefully. So once you have inserted this and pushed it a little bit closer. So I will use my pin to hold it a little more. So I'll just use my pin. <clears throat> So make sure you do this very carefully. So I'll push it for this to meet this. Of course it will meet automatically. And you push in what you have right here. So I'll just hold this part. Okay, instead of using my hand to hold it, I'll just use my pin and hold it. So once I've hold it with my pin, then I can now push the seam. Can you see? So I've pushed the seam. So you can see how it's actually looking. So now, once you have pushed the seam, next is to do what? Lift this the dress up and secure it again with your pin. So you can see the seam. So I just go to the machine now and sew here. But I'm going to first of all pin it. So you can see the seam I lifted. This is it. This is the placket matching up exactly. So all these little tips and tricks, please ensure you, you um, follow the instructions to get this placket. So I'll just go and sew here. I'm going to sew here. And once I open it up and iron, I will have the placket. Can you see? So let me do that now. I have right here. So I have to stitch on the <clears throat> placket. This is the two plackets put together and the same allowance. So <clears throat> by the time we top stitch on it and iron it nicely, everything lays nice and flat so you can see what we have right there so this part of the placket is ready so the next is the collar so to get the collar we need to join the, sh the same lines so i'm joining the back and front neckline together then we are going to take a measurement and cut the collar as well so let me join them so we can get the collar all right so now <clears throat> you can see what we have right here on the placket and I've sewn the seam lines. So I have back and front neckline. So it will be easy for us now to take the measurements of our neckline. So you can see where I'm taking my measurements. I'm going to take it around. So when you are taking this measurement, please be careful. So you'll be able to have the exact neckline. So here I have 15 inches. So I've already cut out my collar at 18 inches. So whatever you have, please add 3 inches to it. <clears throat> I'm going to sew 0 0.5 only on one side. We'll start, the part I'll start joining, I'll sew it. By the time I get, if I have an excess, I'll cut it off at that point and join. Okay, because you can never really tell um, the exact length because I'm working with, with a silk fabric so I like to add extra length so now I will sew one side at 0 0.5 so now I've sewn one side at 0 0.5 so I just turn it around to the front side so I've turned it from this side so you can see that this part is also open so the reason is because I don't actually know where the length will stop, although I've taken my measurement. So to be at the safe side, I sew only one part. So this color right now, I'm going to start sewing it from here, the way I stitched right here. So I'll just go ahead now and 
start put it together this way so by the time it goes up this one stays on its own separately as you can see okay so I'm going to sew from here now around when I get to this point I'll bring it back to show you how to finish it up all right people so you can see the color this is where I started to sew the color so I've sewn it into this point so like I said you never can tell uh, where it will end so this is it this part I did not open it so I'll just go ahead and do what make the mark <clears throat> on it I'll just make a mark with my chalk on it can you see so this is it and that is that so I will lift it up and transfer that mark so make sure you transfer it neatly so I've transferred that mark the mark I have here or better you can use a notch so you know where to sew it so I just place my notch so I'll now go over I'll check it again to be sure where I have my notch okay so this is it let me check if that is where i have my of course that is where i have my notch so i just turn it around this way and please don't uh, you can loosen it out so you'll be able to turn it around to sew so it's looking very close at that point <clears throat> so don't sew so close so you'll be able to turn it and close up this part so i'll just match it up then go ahead and sew this way on a straight cut then cut off the excess so you can see i've stitched it and i'll just cut at 0 0.5 so that is the excess i had <clears throat> so i'm going to turn it to the right side so once I've turned it to the right side can you see that you can see that so I can now flip it this way and so so make sure where you mark is actually where it's supposed to be so I'll sew it right so you can see the color right now I'm done with the dress and this is where the color stops and this is where the placket starts so you can just go ahead and weave or serge around it because this fabric frills. So okay. So then after weaving, you can now go ahead and top stitch. So in top stitching, I'll just flip all my seams automatically to this part and I'm going to sew round. All right. So now it's time for us to sew the sleeves. So for the sleeves, I'll just open up my sleeve and I'm going to take a straight measurement of my sleeve from end to end. So taking my straight measurement here, I have 19 inches. So just add one inch to it. If you have an excess, just cut it out. So this is 20 inches, as you can see, which remains two inches. So I'll now go over to the machine now the same way i stitch the placket i'll lay it this way and run my straight stitch then top stitch this way then close up the size and we are done all right so now i'm done sewing and top stitching my sleeve so this is the back piece and this is what you expected to have if you have added some extra inches so all you need to do is to trim it off and that is all so once you have trimmed it off please ensure you make little notches to ease the curvy part of your kimono so i'll repeat the same thing to the other side so we are done with this dress right now and i'm turning it to the right side okay so you can now go ahead and give it a good press so you can see the color which is the main purpose of this tutorial looking nice and wonderful and beautiful so i will just go ahead and sew my button i can just sew button not buttonhole 
you can just sew your button one two buttons right here okay not button hole because the space we have here can enter your neckline okay very appropriately so i'll just go ahead and sew my buttons right here so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well thank you for coming see you in the next class bye